Welcome to my artsy corner of the internet. That's not my intro. Hi, my name is Margaret and welcome to my artsy corner of the internet. Today I'm going to show you guys how I made my own dance costumes out of materials I found in my dorm room and $3 bed sheets from a thrift store. I hope you enjoy. So first I started with these fitted bed sheets. So I actually cut off the elastic band that went around like the whole border of it, but I didn't film that. And then here I'm cutting off the uh, seams on the corners to make it flat so that I can start to cut it up. Wow, look at how pretty. And then after it was all laid out, it looked like this. And then here I began cutting like half inch to an inch strips just all the way down. I should note that this bed sheet actually cut really nice and it was nice and like had 90 degree corners so it was easy to cut the same length strips. The other one that I used, it was all wonky, and so it was harder to find strips that were like the same exact length, but it's still doable. So yeah, I'm basically just cutting it up into long strips, and then I'm kind of just rolling it up and then putting it together in groups of three, um, just to make sure that all of the strips that are close to each other are the same length, and also we're going to be using three at a time. So. And then here I'm taking three of those strips and I'm just tying them together at the top to hold them together. Wow, let's say together one more time. And then from there I'm just starting to braid the whole length of the strip down. And let me tell you, I did this for so long. I never want to braid another bed sheet ever again. But yeah, I'm just braiding braiding and braiding them and then uh, you have to keep on pulling them to make sure that they don't tangle at the bottom so that's what that chaotic mess is but yeah you just you just braid it and then at the end you tie another knot so that it doesn't fall on the fall on fall out yeah there we go and then here's just a close-up but uh, one thing that I did with this because there is a print on this um, bed sheet is I kind of folded it so that the more vivid side was on the outside of the braid Obviously, you're not going to see the print once it's all braided, but it's just nicer to see that contrast of color. And then here, I was tying it to the bed frame post thing to make it easier to braid all the way down. So, it's helpful if you can tie this to something. And then I just continued to do the same thing over and over again until I had a pretty substantial amount of braided ropes. And no, this is not a tutorial on how to break out of prison. Okay, so next we're going to turn these long rope braids that we're making into what I just call like rosettes, so like little circle flower things. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm taking this knot at the end and just flipping it over the rest of the braid. And then what I did is I threaded some yarn through a darning needle. And basically what you see me now doing is connecting these two braids together with the thread. And so what I do is I go in between the spaces of the braid and then just pull that thread through. So I'm not actually sewing through any fabric because I didn't have any real needles on hand, but I'm sewing through the spaces of the braid. So this is definitely the most difficult part of these little flower things is the very beginning. So once you kind of have that little knot loop created, you're going to go and you're going to start to twist this braid into a circle and you're going to connect the rest of the braid to this little center bud that you have by connecting the spaces between two of the braids. That's not a great explanation, but basically you're going to find one of the uh, strips of bed sheet in the braid, put your darning needle through, and then put it through the other loop of the braid, and you're going to slowly start coiling it into a little circle.
another thing to mention here is when you're first starting off one of these little flowers, you want to make sure that the knot is on the back side. So what you're looking at right now is the back side of one of these circles. So this is where kind of all the ugly stitches are going to be, and it's going to kind of look really messy later on once you get to the end of it. So you want that little uh, nub of a knot to be on the back, because if it's on the front, then you're going to have to like pull it through later, and then it makes it less strong and it looks really bad. So when you're kind of first starting it out, try to get everything that's ugly on the back of it, including the knot. <laughs> So this is basically the bulk of the work. So once you have enough rope braids to start making these little rosettes, uh, this is basically what you're going to be doing for most of it. And I would recommend just putting on like a movie or a YouTube video or something and just kind of getting to work because once you do like one or two of them, it kind of just becomes therapeutic and mindless and you can just kind of do it with your hands when your mind is doing something else or watching something else. when you get to the end of one of these little circles you just tie a knot with your thread and then don't cut off the tail of thread because we're going to use it later. So once you have enough circles to kind of start planning stuff out you're going to lie them out all on the ground and just start to play around with a shape. So for this one this was actually the second top I made and the first top it was a solid white fabric and I was more inspired by like clouds and kind of swirls and it I definitely wanted it to feel lighter. This one I was thinking more about like body armor and like the breastplates, but instead of making it out of like mether, <laughs> metal or leather, I was making it out of these uh, almost flower-like looking things. So I definitely wanted it to look a little bit stronger and so I made it a little bit more about the structure and the bulk opposed to the actual swirls. But whatever your inspiration is, I just kind of played around on the ground rearranging them in different ways that I thought looked nice. So this was very fun because you just kind of get to play around with whatever shape you want the top to come out like. And then once I get a shape that I like, this is a very important part, but you have to flip all of them over. So as I kind of said before, there's a right side and a wrong side. And the right side looks like a pretty flower, and the back side looks like a mess. <laughs> and it has like the little nub that sticks out, and it has a mess of yarn that's holding the whole thing together. So whenever I, once I get the shape that I like, I just went through and I flipped all the little circles over because we're about to sew them together, and you just don't want ugly knots and big stitches on the front of your costume, or on the outside of your costume. So. I've made too many mistakes with knitting and other projects where I accidentally sew the inside as the outside, so just remember to flip it over. So this is the back part of the top that I'm working on right now, and so I flipped all the pieces over, and then I'm taking the tail of the yarn that I told you not to cut off, but if you did, it's totally fine and I'm beginning to sew the circles together. So I'm using the exact same method that I did when I was making the circles of I'm finding that space in between the uh, braids and just sewing. And I like to use the tails of the yarn that I use to make the spirals because I think it just makes it a little bit stronger and you don't have to worry about the threads coming untied. But if you didn't leave the tails on, you can always just introduce a new piece of yarn and just tie like a quadruple knot at the beginning. But yeah, I'm just beginning to sew all of the circles together and start to make an actual structure. And then when you flip it over, this is what the outside looks like. So then I got started on the front part of the top and I do the same thing where I flip them all over and then I just begin to sew them together. 
And another thing that I should probably mention is that I do like to sew it when it's still on the ground. I don't like picking up any of the circles just because sometimes I find that I start to sew them a little bit wonky and I really want to keep the same shape that I just spent all that time planning out. So I like to just sew them on the floor so that way I know that it's going to hold the shape that I originally intended instead of picking up two circles, sewing them down, and then putting them back down and realizing that I messed up or it doesn't look the way that I wanted it to. Then after all of that, when you flip it over, this is what the front looks like. And it was at this point that I realized I did not have enough rope braids created, and so I had to go back, cut out more, and braid them again, and this is my power stance while I was doing that. So at this point I had both of the front and back panels done and I just needed straps to go over the shoulders to connect the two. So I needed smaller rosettes than I needed for the front and back. So what I did is I braided out a whole rope braid and then I tied two knots pretty close together in the center. And then I just took a pair of scissors and cut right in between those knots and then I had two smaller rope braids. So then this is what it looked like once I connected the straps to the back panel. So then here I am connecting the front, the back, and the straps all together. And again, you want to make sure that you are connecting on the wrong side. So this is almost more important because you don't want the front to be inside out and the back to be right side out. So just make sure that when you're looking at it, when you're connecting it, it looks like both uh, sides are inside out. And here is my first time trying it on. So I put it on and I kind of saw how it looked and then decided what tweaks I wanted to made, make. And I decided I wanted it to sit kind of asymmetrically. So I decided to sew up one side and leave the other side open so my dancer could just get in from the side. So then I just connected those two sides with the same sewing technique. And yeah, that's basically it. It's the same thing that we've been doing this whole time. Now this is a very satisfying point. You now get to give the inside of your thing a haircut. It feels so good because it's such a mess on the inside with all of the yarn and everything. So I'm just going through and cutting off all of the stray yarn, all of the little uh, braided parts that are really long. A more proper way to do this is to take all of those ends and weave them through the other stitches so that they're kind of incorporated into the garment. It just gives it a little bit more structure and holds so that you don't have to worry about anything uh, falling out. Because if you cut the little pieces of yarn too short, they can just come undone easier and then you can't really retie them because you cut them too short. So weaving them in probably would have been better. But at this point, I think I was on hour like 30 of making this thing in one weekend. So I was just kind of ready to get it over with. So I just cut them all. So then this is me a couple days later. I ended up bringing the costumes to a rehearsal and I realized that I had tried it on myself and it fit, but my dancers were a lot shorter than me. So I actually had to take out one rosette on each of the straps to make it fit more comfortably. Luckily, this isn't too hard to do. Basically what I did is I found the rosette I wanted to take out and I kind of separated it from the rosette that it was connected to. And I found the piece of yarn that was holding the two together. And I cut it because I was pretty certain that that was the yarn that was holding it there. Um, but you do have to be careful because if you cut the wrong piece of yarn or if you cut part of the braid, it can kind of cause the whole thing to unravel because everything's kind of just braided and woven together. So it can come undone pretty easily if you cut. So you can also just try to take out the yarn knot that you made uh, to be a little bit safer. 
but yeah and then you can see me here pulling out the string that part is actually pretty un pretty easy to undo um, you just kind of start pulling at the string and you can kind of separate the two uh, rosettes and the string will kind of reveal itself once you make that initial cut or untie the knot and then you can just use your needle to pull it apart and it should come apart pretty easily So then once I took out the two rosettes that made it too long, I just re-sewed the straps and it was all dandy and looked like I never made a mistake. So take this as a warning, you know, fit your dancers. <laughs> and then I haven't shown you this one yet, but this is the first top that I made. And I also had to make adjustments after the rehearsal. Uh, not many though. So basically what I was doing here was just taking a white piece of yarn and I had tied the straps uh, on the dancer to make sure that they were the right length for her and so she felt comfortable dancing in it and then I just took a piece of yarn and kind of wove it through the knot and ended up tying it just so that we were both certain that the knot wouldn't come uh, undone when she was dancing on stage and accidentally have her flash the entire audience because that would be awful. And then finally, the last little thing I had to do after the rehearsal and fitting was braid one more thing together. And at this point, let me tell you, I did not want to braid another thing ever again. I stopped braiding my hair. I was over it. But I braided this final thing so that I could use this um, to lace the dancers into their costumes. And it looked nice and it was strong and dandy. So I made three costumes in total, but number one and two were basically the same technique. This was one that I started first and then finished last because I thought it was terrible and then I decided to fix it and made it not as terrible. So anyway, this is basically what I did because I did not film the first part. Basically, I laid out four of those braids um, next to each other like I'm showing you here. And then I created a loop braid, so I just tied the ends together to make a circle of the braid and I made three of those and I laid them on top of those four other braids that I had like this drawing. So all of those uh, blue lines are different braided ropes like I showed you earlier and then I sewed them all together wherever you see um, intersections and then those two lines that I just made are places where I sewed those two ropes together. So here I'm drawing from a front view what it kind of looks like. I basically made a rope cage that had two straps. So the top of those little triangles are the top of the straps. I hope that made sense. It probably didn't. But there is the thing. I think I just hit my mic microphone. I'm so sorry. But that is the little cage that I made. I hope that made sense. It probably didn't. But yeah, I basically just made this little cage and then I took all of the extra scrap fabric that I had from the patterned bed sheet and I just began to began, wow, I just began to tie little sections of that onto this cage. And yeah, that's basically what I did. Let me tell you, all of the footage that you're seeing is from the same weekend. I worked from sunup to sundown on these costumes and my back hurt so bad. So yeah, I would not recommend trying to make all of these in one weekend because I didn't do anything else. And I watched so many true crime podcasts that I was terrified for the next week. So then here I am trying on all of the different costumes that I made, doing a little fashion show for myself in my dorm room. But yeah, I think they all turned out pretty cute. We ended up live streaming the performance. It was great. Nobody could really see the costumes because the camera was blurry. And I was like, wow, why did I waste my entire life making these? But it was pretty fun. And like that used to be a bed sheet. And I just slapped my leg and I think you could hear it. So sorry. It's like midnight. I want to get this voiceover done. But yeah, I think they turned out pretty cool. And... Y'all will just have to watch the dance video that I made for this because you'll be able to see all the costumes in motion and in their fullest vivacity. I don't know what that word means. But yeah, thanks for watching me uh, torture myself for a weekend to make these. I hope you enjoyed. 
I hope you think they look cool. And yeah, thanks for watching. And don't forget to click here to watch the dance that inspired these costumes and where they wore these so that you can see them in action.